So here's an example. So this is uh, your magnetic model, so and, and this was in 2005. <clears throat> so you can see we sit over here. You can see that our magnetic north is, is greatly different than, uh, um, than what true north is. So if this being true north right here, you can see where magnetic north is looking up over here. And you can see by interpolation from here's 20, here's 10, that we're sitting somewhere uh, close to close to somewhere in the in the middle there. So we'd be right around 15, 16 degrees, depending on where we're exactly at right here. So you can see that this is showing you exactly where the magnetic north is really looking. And this then helps us to determine what the declination is. Here's another uh, different way to look at it, different uh, view if you want, if, if you may, if you want to look at it this way. So same thing, so here we're sitting right over here, somewhere in this area here. So there is our north, that's magnetic north, but then if you take the meridian north, you can see then this difference right here, that difference of the angle there, that then is what our declination is. So in this area here, yes, we're about 15 degrees. So here's another way to look at it again. So there's our geographic poles. <clears throat> geographic North Pole, meaning that's our true North Pole, and we also have a true, true South Pole. We also have a magnetic North Pole, which is just off to one direction. Again, that magnetic pole changes. So of course with your uh, rotational poles, this is your true north pole and your true south pole. That's what the Earth rotates around. So magnetic north being somewhere in a different location, let's say it's about a thousand kilometers away from where true north is. Now like I say, this changes. This location does change where magnetic north is. So this is just an example for you. If we're saying this is about a thousand kilometers away, I have a point down here just up, uh, up north of us up north of the United States, I should say. I've got a point right there, and if I look up the meridian, and then I now look over to magnetic north, so magnetic north is now to the left of where my true north is. True north is along the exact meridian of the Earth. So if I look at magnetic north from where I'm at, I'm looking to the left. So now I'm looking to the left, and I have 13 degrees right there. So then that would be considered to call declination of 13 degrees west because I'm looking to the net left of true north. So let's give you some examples here by using station sketches so you can kind of get a better, see if you can get a better handle of what, uh, what we're trying to talk about right here. And this is, this is basically, as you understand declination, this is where it's going to come down into the actual practice when you do these station sketches or do examples like these. So let's assume that you had a magnetic bearing of a property line that was recorded uh, as south 43 degrees 30 minutes east in 1862. At the time, the magnetic declination at the survey location was 3 degrees 15 minutes west. We want to know what the geodetic bearing is needed today for that same location, for that same spot. So what we're saying is we want to know what our, our bearing is today based on true north. That's what we're looking for. So let's take a step by step here. So the first thing, let's just draw what the declination looks like. Here's true north, that's in red, geodetic north. Then the magnetic north then is always measured off of that angle from geodetic north over to where um, whatever the location is based upon the, the degree of angle there. So you have 3 degrees 15 minutes west. So that's what we're showing here in blue, this 1862 magnetic north. All right, so now what we're saying is, in 1862, we measured an angle. 1862, we measured an angle of south 43 degrees 30 minutes east, but it was a magnetic angle. So remember, when we're dealing with angles or anything, we're measuring off of the given reference lines. That's what we're looking for. We're given off the measured reference line. So our reference line was magnetic north, not true north, magnetic north. So that's why you see right here, I made my measurement off of the, uh, the north-south line of magnetic north. So that was my bearing. That was my 1862 bearing in south 43 degrees 30 minutes east. Now the key to this is, on the Earth, this location from here to here, that is fixed. We're not moving. The only thing that's changing is our reference line. 
We had a reference line in 1862, and now we're going to try and compare to a reference line in geodetic north, true north, along the actual meridian from south pole to the north pole. But this point here where we set and this on the ground never ever moves. That stays the same. All that's changing is what angle we're measuring to, what reference line we're measuring to. So now let's label the angle that we're looking for. We told you we wanted the geodetic bearing. We wanted the true bearing. Well, that true bearing then is measured off of our true north south line. So from here all the way over to that same location. So all that then ends up being is we know the value of this portion of the angle. We know the value of our declination, which was in there, 3 degrees 15 minutes. So then you add those two together, and you end up with south 46 degrees 45 minutes east. So let's give you another example. So let's assume we had a magnetic uh, bearing of a line AB in 1878 that was north 26 degrees 15 minutes east. The magnetic declination in 1878 was 7 degrees 15 minutes west. In 2000, the magnetic declination was 4 degrees 30 minutes east. Now what we want to know is what is the 2000 magnetic bearing? So this is a good, good example for us to understand of what we always need to reference back to. Remember that every magnetic declination is referenced, the, the definition that I gave you was it's the horizontal angle from true north to the magnetic declination. So if I'm giving, and I'm talking here, we've got two different declinations, the commonality between the two is true north. So let's draw what we have there in the, in the beginning. We have true north, that's in red. Okay, now our magnetic north, 7 degrees 15 minutes west of true north. That's our declination, and that was back in 1878. So let's draw that bearing line. Let's draw what was given in 1878, what it was measured off of. So north 26 degrees 15 minutes east, measured off of magnetic north in 1878. <clears throat> and again, one, uh, another reminder is to make sure you know that this line right here, these two points on the ground, on the earth, are not moving. They're not changing. Those points on the ground stay the same. The only thing that's changing is what we are measuring, what, are we are, what reference line we are measuring from. Okay, so the next thing you want to do, let's draw now our, our 2000 magnetic declination. That's the next piece of information that we need. So that one is uh, 4 degrees 30 minutes. Let me change that. That should read east. So 4 degrees 30 minutes east, because it's east of true north. Okay, now what I'm looking for then is what is the 2000 magnetic bearing. So let's draw then, label the angle that we're looking for. That is this angle. Okay, it's measured off of the 2000 magnetic north. Not true north, but the 2000 magnetic north. So then here, all you can look at and see is, all right, well, if I know the overall angle from here to here is 2615, I know this angle and I know this angle, I can subtract those and end up with my final angle, which is my bearing then of two in 2000, my magnetic bearing in 2000. So as you calculate that, it's 26 degrees 15 minutes, minus 7 degrees 15 minutes, minus 4 degrees 30 minutes, end up with... The magnitude of that is 14 degrees 30 minutes east. Being that it's 14 minutes 30 minutes east, we're in the first quadrant, which then gives us a new bearing then of north 14 degrees 30 minutes east. And this isn't uncommon, the difference between 1878 to 2000. That seems like a really large change, but it, it's really not. So the key as you do these sketches is to draw the information that you have. Draw it so you can see it. Make sure you're writing down and, and showing you what uh, what angles are measured from what. Everything is measured in reference, every declination angle is referenced from true north. So if I'm asking for a bearing from true north, then you need to make sure you're measuring that angle off of true north. If I'm asking for a bearing or an azimuth off of a magnetic uh, reference line, magnetic north, then it's off that line that you need to uh, need to be make sure that you're measuring these angles. So it's all just a matter of keeping in track of all the different uh, reference lines that we're going to end up with. Because they, you're going to go through it step by step and you could easily get yourself confused. But make sure you draw it out and label it appropriately so there wouldn't be any question.